Do you know that 80% of the land in Canada is inhabited? Despite having stunning mountain views and breathtaking lakes, forests, and prairies, the Canadian lands are unpopulated. It's the second largest country in the world which is inhabited due to its geography and extremely unsuitable climate for humans. But what if we told you that recently, something shocking was discovered in Canada that left the scientists reeling? Join us as we dive into the intriguing details of what shook them to their core, and let's uncover the mystery as to why most of the area is abandoned like the ugly duckling. Canadian Landscape Canada has a total land area of 9.985 km square with the world's longest coastline and one of the largest international borders with the U.S., which extends to 8,890 km. The three territories and the ten provinces of the second largest country in the world, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and the Arctic Ocean on the northern side of the country. The country is abundant in breathtaking destinations which allure tourists. From the lush green forests, rockiest mountains, and sandy deserts to one of the largest waterfalls in the world, Canada is the site for the sore eyes which leaves tourists mesmerized. The Canadian regions can be divided into four parts. Rugged beauty of the West Coast the mountainous west coast is known as the Cordillera region by the geographers which contains the province of British Columbia and Yukon, which contains the highest mountain ranges of Canada. Mount Logan, which is the second highest peak in Canada, is located near the Yukon-Alaska border. Not only that, but the other four tallest peaks of Canada also lie in the province of Yukon, which borders the Pacific. As we move towards the east of the Pacific, there lie the lush green forests, which are the habitat of the various wildlife species. The wildlife and the abundant forests in this part of the country are the major contributors to the enthralling destinations. Central Canada, Quebec, and Ontario, two of the most prominent and largest cities, lie in the central part of Canada, which significantly shape the country's image and are referred to as a World Heritage Treasure by UNESCO. Quebec City appropriately represents French-Canadian culture, and it is known to be one of the most European cities where most of the population resides. It has one of the richest cultures, deep history, and one of the best winter festivals, especially around Christmas. Summers are also filled with festivals like New France festivals, and the street culture makes it ideal for the visitors. Not only in culture, this part of the country is extremely rich in landscapes, as it is bordered by Hudson Bay to the north and four of the largest lakes on the south, which include Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and Lake Ontario. Both of these provinces are home to the animals like beavers and moose, as small lakes can be found all around the provinces, which makes the surrounding area wetlands. Atlantic Canada Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia, which are located in Atlantic Canada, are the densely populated regions of the country, unlike the other parts. This region is also known as Maritimes, which is surrounded by deep blue oceans and rocky cliffs. Moving away from the border, the central part of Atlantic Canada is no less than a dream, as it has dense forests, cool temperatures, and all the aesthetic views which can charm the people to settle there forever. Although Atlantic Canada contains one of the largest clusters of the Canadian population, however, there are some parts of Atlantic Canada, too, which are completely barren, like the territory of Labrador. It is located in the northeastern area of Quebec City and consists mostly of rocky mountains and stone features, which makes it an unsuitable habitat for the people. Northern Canada the northern region of Canada refers to the three main territories of Yukon, Nunavut, and Northwestern Territories. Even though Yukon lies in the northern region of the country, it experiences the Cordillera environment, which is not the case with Nunavut and Northwest Territories. Nunavut and Northwest Territories are completely in contrast with Yukon, and they contain rocky formations, dry landscapes, and barren areas with little or no vegetation. Moving to the very north of Canada, is the territory where no human dares to exist, as it is the home of the massive islands which are covered with snow. This part of the country is one of the charming places for tourists due to its white snowy mountain views and various ice activities. 
Animals like seals and polar bears are the only animals that can be found in this region due to low temperatures. Canada is the only country that has six time zones. Pacific time, mountain time, central time, eastern time, Atlantic time, and Newfoundland time. Weather in Canada. Canadian weather is a wonder of its own. Without a doubt, Canada is one of the coldest countries in the world which experiences frozen lakes, snowfalls, and hail in some cities of the countries from December to March. The temperature drops below minus 20 Celsius in some of the cities which makes it completely inhabitable for humans. Even though the winters are harsh in Canada, it is one of the four climates which is experienced by the country. It also experiences pleasant springs from March to June, warm summers from June to September, and moderate autumns from September to December. Central Canada, where four of the largest lakes lie, experiences harsh cold weather with a large amount of snow and frozen lakes. However, the regions near the Atlantic and Pacific do not experience a large amount of rainfall, but it has breezy weather and heavy periods of rainfall in winter. The area with the extremest weather is the northern part of the country, which is why it is the least populated. The northern part of the country either has straight 24 hours of sunlight or a full day in complete darkness. This immoderation of the temperature makes it unsuitable for humans to make a living in this area, and it is usually the habitat of the animals like polar bears and seals. In contrast, the prairie region experiences dry weather with little rainfall. However, the weather in this region causes the Alberta clippers, which refers to the fierce tornadoes of the thunderstorms. The diversification of the weather in the country makes it appealing to tourists throughout the world. The beauty is outshined in all the different seasons, however it varies on the individual preferences. Canada's Must-See Attractions The vastness and diversification of the countries in different regions stretch the tourist attractions throughout the whole country. There is a lot to experience in a single country. From the culturally rich cities to the aesthetic views, all can be experienced in seven days. Glacial lakes in the central region, culturally rich festivals in Quebec City, historically rich monuments in Quebec and Ontario, and the frozen glaciers with the beluga whales in the northern part make the most of the tourist attractions as a whole. One needs only seven days to discover the treasures of this country, as that is all the time you need to drive from one side of the country to the other side of the country. However, if one chooses the other means of traveling such as train or air, then the traveling time reduces and it allows the tourists to completely soak in the alluring destinations and make memories. To make the most of it, one should be ready to go all in with the budget, as the accommodation in the larger cities are little pricey. However, it also depends on the exchange rate of the individual country. One of the most affordable cities in Canada is Quebec, which is culturally rich and the center of cultural events. The vastness of experiences in Quebec makes it one of the most attractive places for tourists. It is the best combination of naturalistic landscape and city buzz. Discovering the Hidden Wonders of the Canadian Prairies The Canadian prairies are a fascinating and underrated area of Canada that is just begging to be discovered. It has vast grasslands which more or less cover the entire central Canada and cross the provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Although these prairies appear to be nothing but flat land, there is much more to them than what meets the eye. First things first, did you guys know that these prairies are called the breadbasket of Canada? That's because this region is one of Canada's most important agricultural areas. You name it and this area has it all. From wheat to canola to barley and oats, the farmers produce these crops all year long. And not only this, but these crops have high demand all over the world and are shipped to feed thousands of people. Agriculture is only one part that makes the prairies so special. Some of Canada's most diverse and largest ecosystems can be found in this area. The mixed grass prairie, tall grass prairie, and short grass prairie are the three basic types of prairie ecosystems. Each of these types is home to a different and unique set of plants and animals that have adapted to life on the prairies. The most common type of grassland in Canada is the mixed grass prairie, which is home to a wide variety of grass, flowers, and shrubs. It used to be home to massive herds of bison. But sadly, overhunting and habitat loss has made life difficult for these animals today. 
and on rare occasions, people have sighted them in the prairies. Tallgrass Prairie is a rare and endangered ecosystem that can only be found in a few isolated areas over the prairies. And by isolated, we all know it means the few areas which haven't been completely populated by humans. One of the most fascinating features of this prairie is its towering grasses, some of which can reach up to two meters. In addition to this, it is home to a wide variety of birds, including the endangered greater prairie chicken. Finally, there's the short grass prairie. This is the driest part of the prairie's ecosystems and can be found in the southernmost parts of central Canada. The climate in these regions is extremely hot and dry, where only the toughest plants can survive. But even in these unforgiving temperatures, these prairies are described to be the most beautiful of the three. We know what you must be thinking. Why should we care about the Canadian prairies? Well, for starters, this area is a crucial part of Canadian heritage. It is home to a wide variety of plants and animals which you will not find anywhere in the world. Moreover, it is a great place to experience the root of Canada's prairie culture, which ranges from small villages and cities to beautiful countryside restaurants and starry skies. All in all, the prairies may not be Canada's most flashy landscapes the country has got to offer, but it is definitely worth visiting. This region is a whole world of beauty and culture just waiting to be discovered. So now you know where you can go when you need to get away from city life to get a bit of peace and quiet. Natural Resources of Canada Canada is blessed with a wealth of natural resources, from incredible forests to rich mineral reserves. In fact, Canada is considered to have one of the greatest natural resources of all countries. Let's dive into these resources and see what makes them stand out. The Forests as one of the world's most forested nations, Canada has woods that span approximately 4 million square kilometers. These forests are crucial to the economy of the nation and offer many advantages to Canadians. The forestry sector employs thousands of Canadians every year. It significantly contributes to the country's GDP and makes millions of dollars every year. And you know what Canadians say about their forest industry? It's tremendous. The woods of Canada offer more than just access to timber and paper. They are also home to many, many animals. Not only this, but they provide recreational activities to many people. Next in line are minerals. Thanks to the range of minerals found there, Canada dominates the mining industry globally. The country produces more than 60 different metals and minerals, including copper, gold, nickel, zinc, and uranium. The mining industry contributes significantly to the Canadian economy by generating cash and jobs. Because minerals are needed to produce building materials, cars, and electronics, the mining industry is also essential to other sectors of the economy, like transportation and construction. Now let's talk about energy. Oil, natural gas, and hydroelectricity are among Canada's abundant energy resources. The nation ranks fourth in the world for oil production only after the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Russia. Natural gas is another rich resource in Canada and is utilized to power enterprises and heat houses. One of the main producers of hydroelectricity on the planet, the country gets over 60% of its power from hydroelectric power offices. And now, water freshwater resources, such as lakes, rivers, and groundwater, are found in vast quantities in Canada. These water resources are crucial for a variety of industries and economic sectors, including agriculture, industry, and domestic consumption. They are important in preserving ecosystems and biodiversity. Canada's government has managed to carefully preserve its survival for future generations. Isn't that cool? Lastly, we have the fisheries. With its long coastline and close proximity to three seas, Canada is the best spot for fishing. The country's fisheries are an important asset that is carefully maintained in order to keep the long-term well-being of many fish populations. The fishing business is an important source of income for the majority of coastal communities' networks and supports a large number of occupations. All in all, Canada's natural resources are important for the climate and economy of the country. The forestry sector, mining, energy, water, and fisheries contribute to the nation's GDP and provide employment opportunities to large numbers of people. Canada's natural resources are extremely important for supporting biological systems, biodiversity, and sporting activities. Exploring the Surprise Growth in the White North 
Canada's population has significantly increased in recent years. According to a Bloomberg article, Canada's population has increased by more than one million people for the first time in history, signaling a significant turning point in the demographics of the nation. So what could have caused this sudden population growth, and what does it mean for the future of the country? In this section, we will dive into the key factors which have contributed to the boom in the country's population and what it means for the country's social, economic, and political situation. Immigration is the main factor that has caused this sudden population change. Canada has remained underpopulated for many years. Due to this, the government has written many immigration laws to attract different businessmen and skilled workers to improve their job market. According to the Canadian government, Canada welcomed over 400,000 new immigrants in 2020, leading to one of the highest immigration rates in the world. This flood of new immigrants has fueled Canada's economic expansion and cultural boost. High birth rates are another factor fueling Canada's population growth. The average Canadian woman now has two children, whereas these numbers previously varied from 1 to 1.5. Go Canadians! Due to this reason, it has become increasingly hard for the government to make policies to sustain the country's growth in the long run. However, it provides a positive bigger picture of the country's diverse society. Like many other things, this population growth is not without its challenges. One of the bigger questions faced is how to maintain the quality of life for all Canadians while accommodating population growth. Some of the major areas that will require significant investment to keep up with the population surge include housing, transportation, and infrastructure. The next challenge is to ensure an easy transition for the immigrants into Canadian society. That's a tough one. Canada prides itself on its multiculturalism and diversity. But ensuring that the new immigrants feel welcome and included in their new home is a crucial part. It's like a mother trying to make sure that her children get along with other kids their age. It's not easy. The Canadian economy is also affected by population expansion. While a new, younger population can lead to economic growth, it can also increase demand for resources like housing and health care. This can put a permanent strain on public resources and services. Canada's population increase is a remarkable achievement and shows how desirable the nation is for people from all around the world. The country still has a long way to go in order to maintain its position as one of the most welcoming nations in the world. So, there you have it, folks. Canada is a great country that has a lot to offer, so next time you're in the mood to go for a vacation, you know where to go. We'll see you in the next video. Let us know your favorite part about Canada in the comments section.